There is no acceptable reason behind somebody encouraging somebody to coercively control a woman. No, but I, I think, again, there's, for instance, when they talk about him being a misogynist, I've certainly heard interviews where he has said he believes men and women are equal. That's not the headlines that you read about. You hear the, the term misogynist all the time because of, you know, a way a way of thought that he has about how, you know, men and women might be well, let different. Let me read you something that I made a note of from the material that I see without even looking for it now on, on Instagram since I did a bit of research into him. And, and for that reason, I'm sure you're doing a lot more research than I have into him as his lawyer. Um, and I would be surprised if you hadn't seen stuff of this nature. This is a man you claim to see men and women as equal. Quote, females are the ultimate status symbol. People think I'm running around with these hoes, forgive me, because I like sex. That's nothing to do with the reason why I'm running around with these B word. I got these Bs uh, just so everyone knows who the Don is. Who's got the big booty cuties with their name tattooed on them? Tate only Tate. If I walk in a club, me and Tristan and 25, forgive me, bitches, who's the richest man in the club? Females are the ultimate status symbol amongst elite players. I go out and F and I come back to her. I don't care about her. I only love my girl. That's not cheating. That's exercise. I mean, that isn't a man you know, Sheila, who's interested you know in that, women's rights, is it? Sheila, what that sounded to me like was rap lyrics. There are endless well, forget, rap Forget rap lyrics. It was no, him no, but, speaking. But no, but he is a he public said it. person. But this is the thing. Why are you drawing a difference between something Andrew Tate, a public persona who obviously, he's come out and publicly said a lot of what he says is satire. Yes, a lot of what he says is satire. Yes, satire. But are we arresting rap artists well, for Tina, their lyrics? Forgive yes. me, I'm not interviewing a rap artist's lawyer. I'm interviewing the, the, the lawyer of a man who is being held in extended custody in a Romanian prison on charges of people trafficking. But, but that's the point. The point is right now, that's not what he's jailed for, right? But I think there's a difference between the things he says publicly as part of his public per persona and who he is as a private person. So you're not seeing him talking about his children. You're not seeing the family man side of him. The, the statements that you're reading or the quotes that you're reading, and again, it's a little hard for me. I don't know the context, but whatever those statements are, if those are statements he made, that is part of a public persona, which again is very different than the private individuals. And he's not in jail for those statements, much like you cannot put a rap artist in jail because his lyrics might be offensive and, and they might talk about, you know, the B word and the hose and the things that again may be very misogynistic, but you cannot jail someone for that. And it's a slippery slope when we take comments that somebody makes in on a platform like TikTok or social media for a certain type of fan base for a different intent and then we use those statements against them for unrelated uh, Oh, I understand the distinction. I, I absolutely understand the distinction. But it isn't making your job any easier, is it, Tina? That that routinely and very easily you can find this content. Well, it doesn't make my job easy. Anytime there's a high profile case like this and there's a lot of opinions and the, the case, you know, in some ways is being tried in the court of public opinion, whether it's statements he's made or leaked information. None of that makes my job easier. But at the end of the day, we have to remember what we're dealing with when we're in a court of law. And that's evidence, evidence of a crime. And all of the things we're talking about are not evidence of any crime. And it's a, it's a very important distinction because, again, it's easy to condemn the Tate brothers and it's easy to ha have an opinion on what they're going through because of some of the statements they've made that people do not like. But put this in the context of if this was your son or your brother who was jailed. Your focus would not be on, you know, all of the things they may have said if they during their lifetime. You would be concerned with, do the police, does the prosecution have evidence of a crime? And if not, you would want your and, brother or your son to be home. And, and they that's, are, that's, I mean, I mean, it's, it, it, compared to what would be going on in this country, it is unusual that, that, that they're still, from our, you know, through our perspective, it's unusual that they're still in custody here. What do you expect to happen next? Do you expect another um, plea for an extension or do you expect things to come to a ahead pretty soon. So we're going to find out in the next several days, the existing detention order expires on February 27th. And if the prosecution intends to extend that for another 30 day period, they'll have to make that request soon. And then we'll have a hearing on it. Obviously, our hope is that at this point they are released and that they're it's not extended. But am I optimistic about that? No. And I think an additional factor that weighs in is the tremendous amount of assets that have been seized. So almost four million 
million dollars worth of assets were seized from their residence. And unfortunately, that gives the authorities incentive to search and find evidence of some wrongdoing to be able to forfeit and keep assets of that nature. I think the seizure, let's keep in mind, when the police raided their properties and searched them and seized all these items, they didn't find evidence of crime. You know, They've taken these items in the event that they are able to later on show that they're... Well, they say they're ongoing. They say the investigation is ongoing and the assets, some of the assets Correct. they've taken Correct. are, are part is, of that investigation. Of course, but this isn't a situation where police seized things that are illegal on their face. They didn't, you know, seize contraband, drugs. You know, a lot of times when there are these raids, things are taken which are evidence of crime. In this case, there was no evidence of crime that was seized. These are assets that they're holding on to in the event that they can later prove that these are proceeds of ill-gotten gains. And again, at this point, there are not charges filed against them. And the fact that they have $4 million in assets, it gives them further incentive to detain them and continue to search for some crime so that they could try to forfeit, you know, those sizable assets. In one of the hearings where they attempted to end the detention, the judge that refused that request said, and I quote, one of the reasons given was the particular, and I quote, the particular dangerousness of the defendants and their capacity to identify victims with an increased vulnerability in search of better life opportunities. That folds into the allegations of, of people trying Trafficking. Are you satisfied as his lawyer that if this comes to court, you have enough evidence to counter that claim? We do. We don't. Uh, first of all, it's a little difficult because I'm not supposed to comment directly on anything that's happening in the proceedings. As of now, they're closed proceedings. But without and detail, you're... I do. I don't think there's been any evidence that they're a danger to the community in terms of committing crimes. Again, I think at this point, they haven't been charged with crimes. They These are two individuals that have absolutely no criminal history. So... To, I think that's a far leap to say that, you know, they have potential ability to influence people. Again, we're trying to punish them for their ideas and for their thoughts and their freedom of expression, which is what we're not supposed to criminalize. And I think it's a very dangerous place to be headed. We've been hearing today uh, from fathers in particular for some reason today that their young sons are, are interested. He is appealing to them for one reason or another. Uh, when he isn't talking about women, he, he often alludes to soy boys, meaning weak boys, um, and, and talks about depression being not being a real thing. And, and has alluded to the fact that if he, if he ended up in jail, he'd be depressed because of his circumstances. Is he depressed in jail? How is he coping in jail? I wouldn't say he's depressed. I think it's very challenging obviously the circumstances it's we're approaching 60 days of them unexpectedly being put in custody and in a case where the evidence is not strong enough that they ha they haven't even been charged as of now so it's a very challenging situation that they're in but they are they're mentally and physically strong and they are staying motivated they have a strong faith and so they're getting through it the best they can. He has converted, or perhaps both of them, converted to Islam, have they? Well, that's my understanding, yes.